this is one of the most beautiful places in Sweden and I'm allowed to be here so much. I'm working here. This is my life. I'm so happy for that. So happy. Don't follow the money, follow your heart. So welcome back to Jokbok. This time I'm on my way out on a six day trip south of Saltalukta Mountain Lodge. With me, I have four guests behind me and uh, we are heading towards CTR right now. The start was kind of intensive and I couldn't film it. Uh, it was icy trail and it was eager dogs and uh, yeah, very intensive start. As I have told you in videos before, sometimes I had to focus on actually the work I'm doing here, not only filming. Now we are up above the tree line as you see. We are it's not much snow here, but it could be like this. It's very common that it's not as usually. It's actually more common that it is unusually. But I would say it's not much snow. It has been very windy here and it's a very stable icy layer in the bottom. I have to use it the whole week. I have one. Are you Now the dog is outside, we've been having dinner, the dog have got their dinner and it's an incredible moonlight out here and it's also a little bit of a weak northern light that comes and go. <coughs> Inside uh, my room right now, yes and Ida is already and Ida haven't been so much out here because she's so skinny and she hasn't been so much in different cabins like this but 
the first thing she did when I released her was running straight up to the cabin and she wanted to go into the cabin. She didn't hesitate a second and she's never been here inside, never, ever. So it's really fun to see how fast they can develop something like that. Ida super enjoy to be inside anyway and uh, I keep her inside because she are a bad eater, hard worker and you know that makes the dog very skinny so Ida is a skinny one. The fat that the dog have protect them also from the cold so if you have a skinny dog you need to be more careful with it of course. So, Ida and Jesse is inside the, my room now. I'm resting and I think it's time to go to bed here also. Yeah, it is. Good night. Minus 30. The way of living that I have choose is that I never follow the money. I always follow my heart. I follow what do I really want to do. Of course, there is moments that's not always super exactly what you want, but all over, this is what I want to do. I find my passion already when I was super young, 14 year old, and since then, I kind of know what what I want to get out of my life even if I'm educated engineer and I've been to university and study ecology economy juror and things like that that's not what I want to do I can use that competence but this is what I want to do so why should I do other things than I actually want to do why should I live a life where I'm just sitting and dreaming about this this is what I this is exactly what I want to do. Standing behind the dog team, being out in nature, being free, wake up in the morning, meeting nice people from all over the world. If you're living a life far away from your dream, wake up. It's time for you to do something. Don't end up in a life don't waiting for being retired because that's maybe not happening you will maybe not be retired don't take that chance and if you get retired do you really think you're fit then for doing what you want? money is not everything money is just some shit that makes things easier sometimes but money is also one of the biggest traps don't follow the money Follow your heart. Who is it? How many toes? One, two, three, four, five. What? The size. Wolverine. There is a few places that are a little bit more beautiful than other places and one of these places that I have picked is between 
feet to your cabin when you do the round tour around the mountain and not over the mountain and you're coming down into the needle forest and suddenly you see into the gate of Sare. And this is exactly the spot where we're reaching right now. It's, it's Chakali, you still have the forest, you have the mountain, low mountain, and I really enjoy this place. Um, maybe it's not the most beautiful place, maybe it is, I don't know. Maybe you don't think it's beautiful, I think it's beautiful. The taste is, the taste is like the ass is divided in two pieces, so... I don't know, we will see. As normally when you come down to the needle forest, you need a fire. And uh, we stop for coffee, barbecue, bacon, sausage, and uh, yeah. I enjoy the forest more and more for each year that passes by. I also enjoy this landscape between the forest and the mountains. That area is lovely, really lovely. The mountain is nice, the forest is nice, but the thing between, that's wow. and then it's a lot of work to take care of the dogs and carry all the stuff up to the cabin and then a cup of coffee this is Skerfe over there the cliff you see there Skerfe 700 meters deep chup down to the delta and then we have on that side Chakeli this is super beautiful place, really beautiful place. And it's just calm here and the only thing you can see is that coming smoke from the sauna, coming smoke from our cabin and yeah, and smoke from one of the cabins down here that belongs to the Swedish Nature Conservation association something like that so right now we have been feeding the dogs and uh, my four guests are looking at northern light again and then they heading towards the sauna and after that we get some dinner if temperature is dropping so probably it will be 30 or colder tonight a three dogs inside, Nisse, Jesse and Ida. So now we have arrived to Porte Cabin, we have feeding the dogs, we have had dinner and coffee and all that. Now I'm going to bring Jesse and Ida into the cabin. Sophia's already in the cabin. You see, Jesse really wanna come. Jesse. Hey,
and the yachts took off. They really want to go to the cabin. Straight on. And oh, there's more dogs I want to bring inside. Hello, doggy. I want to bring all inside. But we can't bring all of them inside. That's one of the hardest side would have these dogs. I want to have them inside, but can't have 28 dogs in the cabin. Sadly. There's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a day Don't rely on others To get you through the maze So this is a kind of calm moment before we actually start. Now we're going to dress the dogs, take some shit away, dress the dogs, make everything ready to go and the dogs are still relaxed, still kind of calm. That's good. Soon the crazy part start. I don't like that. Maybe they're not crazy today. That is Siberian Jay. Siberian Jay. They are super nice birds and they come really, really close. You see the Siberian Jay here? They're really close. Now they come here and searching for leftover dog food. I have to clean this lens. Yeah, they come here and searching for leftover dog food. That's nice. Dogs are still kind of relaxed. They're still kind of relaxed. I'm coming back and check all the feet also. Dog's still kind of relaxed and now I'm taking the chain. And my team is ready to go. Then I go back and make the booties on the other one. It's too bright. So.
So the start was actually kind of okay as yesterday. They were calm until I have booty all the dogs. Then they start getting more and more stressed and suddenly it just uh, let's go action. The trail is very fast and the dogs doing good work and they're eager to run. So we had to use the brakes a lot now in the beginning. It's so easy that suddenly one sled is on the side and uh, someone crash and lose the team. Or if you crash and you, and you hurt yourself. If you just use the brake a lot and go slowly in curves and when it's downhill, never allow the dogs to go too fast, never allow the top speed, then it's safe. If you go too fast, you're gambling with the health of the dogs. You're gambling with the dogs. Because if you crash, you can hurt the dogs. And, or yourself. But that's a less problem because you choose to do it and then you can hurt yourself, that's fine. But if, you, if someone hurt the dogs, that's not fine. So we drive as boring and as careful as possible. No adrenaline, no full speed in curves, no full speed downhill. Just braking, slowing down, make it safe, enjoy the nature, and enjoy the teamwork with the dogs. That's the goal. Very often I think that, wow, you know, this is one of the most beautiful places in Sweden and I'm allowed to be here so much. I'm working here. This is my life. I'm so happy for that. So happy. So happy. Yeah. Salmon taste coming up. Ah. Yeah, you must bring another antenna again. Hold on. Mm. Thank you, Shrimp. Mati. It's nice soup. Yeah, so you haven't tried it yet. No, but it looks nice. Yes, it from looks the nice. Movie, from the movie, it only counts, right? <laughs> right <yeah>. so. <laughs> as long as. <laughs> it looks nice, it smells nice. Yes, if it looks nice, it's good for YouTube. And it's already more than half empty. Some shit picking and now we're on the way again so I record yeah I'm recording blue sky all over blue sky not a single yeah there is a cloud over there but otherwise not a single cloud only blue sky a sun white snow forest and we are on the way towards east from Akse 
We're leaving all these beautiful mountains behind us and heading towards east and then Cito River and then we follow the Cito River Valley towards the Cito Yaur cabin. In the lead this week, I have Nisse. Nisse. Here is Nisse. And I have Gandalf behind. And these two dogs are usually super crazy, but they start acting better and better. So this week they are very, very nice to work with, actually. Gandalf is just a little bit crazy the last few seconds before start. Behind here, we have a very, very skinny girl. That's Ida. She's out this week and next week she's staying home because you see she's really skinny but she needs to come out because if she's not out she loses appetite also. So it's good but she sleeps inside in the bed most of the day. Then we have Jesse over there. He's working good, eating good and but he's skinny, bad hair so he also sleeps inside. And behind that Mikey. Here's Mikey and Kiwi. Mikey Kiwi and back, back there. Joffrey with the blue eyes and Peter, the black guy. Peter is tangling all the time, you see the knot there. All the time tangled. So that's my team this week. I just saw a ptarmigan running straight in front of my team. I couldn't film it, but it was almost in between my two leader dogs. Lucky they, luckily they didn't eat it. <laughs> oh, so close. We just look at it and <laughs> they thought, what the heck are you a small bird running here with us? <laughs> Funny. Oh, I would love to film that, but too late. Too slow guy with the camera. It's not only me who make tours like this up in the mountain. We are a few companies that are doing it. And I just got a message from Jürg, a friend, who also do it. And he warned me for some passages and that's super helpful actually. If you book a tour like this, you should really book it with a company where the guide is the owner of the dog. Remember that. Small company where the guide is actually the one who owns the company and owns the dog. A lot of companies employ people and that's okay. But then you should know that the guy you follow out, maybe it's his first or second season with the dogs. Do he really know the dogs? Can he really take care of the dogs in a good way? Can he really take care, or she, take care of the situation when it's a bad weather coming up, bad situation? Up to you to decide. So, I would say, go with the guide who owns the dogs, who know what he's doing. Don't go into a big group. Maximum four, five person in a group. I prefer four person in a group. Because when you come into a snowstorm, you don't want to have eight guests behind you or too many teams behind you. Then you want as less guests as possible. Because the snowstorm is not the funny thing out here when you have a group. That's my advice to you guys. You do what you want with this information. But don't blame me. And welcome.
we started here in Santa Lucta and then we went down to City Hall. After that we came around and into Akse and from Akse we went to Lotte and then from Lotte back to Akse and today from Akse around up to City Hall and tomorrow we are just heading the last part back to Salt Lukta and in Salt Lukta we will finish the tour so people are sleeping in the cabin now and I'm here again going to wax or my table shoes what I do is that I heat up the uh, I heat up this first thing that I'm going to put on the shoes So now I have applied this grease all over the shoe. Now I leave them on the light here close to the fire. And I usually apply a little bit too much. And I think it's time for bed now. There is Sarek behind me, coming in some clouds, blue sky, sunshine, as you see, dogs are fine, the snow is fine, we are quite fine, it's quite good, actually, really good, towards Salta. Now we actually start the downhill towards Salto Lukta and uh, until now the snow is quite okay but some part is really steep and could be nasty here. It's not so much snow so we just go slowly and take it careful. This is a wide angle camera so I don't know if you see it but it gets steeper and steeper and then finally in front of me the trail more or less disappear. It's not super steep, but if you crash a team here, the consequences are not good. So that you should take it quite serious when you're doing things like this. I really had to break hard. I'm through and then wait here. Stand up, stand up, stand up. And see, so all of them coming through because this is a place where things can go wrong. Good. <laughs> Very good. No, stop. I survived up to now. Let's see. Yes. 